Welcome to Computer Science 320 2015 Winter 1's Midterm 1 Practice Problems. So we're on problem 3, more marriage counseling from Computer Science 320. In this problem we consider the Gale-Shapley algorithm with men proposing. For each statement circle one answer to indicate whether the statement is always true, never true, or sometimes true. True for some problem instances, but not true for other problem instances. In some cases, we're restricting our attention to just certain types of instances, in which case we're asking whether the statement is always, never, or sometimes true among all the instances of that type. So again, we're dealing with the algorithm with men proposing. Obviously, that's different from the algorithm with women proposing in a symmetrical way. But when men are proposing, for example, remember, men get their optimal outcome among all of the possible stable matchings women get their pessimal outcome. And when we reverse that, women get their optimal outcome, men get their pessimal outcome. So can it be the case that two men both propose to n women? Is that always true, never true, or sometimes true? Well, for two men to both propose to n women, we're going to have to have one of them be the first one, right? So that person proposes to their nth woman and that means that they were rejected or they were kind of evicted, if you like, their engagement was broken by n minus one women. Uh, that means every single one of the women above that last person on their list, so here's their list, w1, w2, w3, da 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 da, wn. We can just assume that one of the men has the women in that order if we like, because we can always reorder them so they're in that order. Well, let's actually go put in wn minus 1 here, all of these women have rejected this man. And that means they all have to be married. And remember, once a woman is married in the algorithm, sorry, engaged in the algorithm, she never becomes unengaged. When the algorithm ends, she marries whoever she ends up engaged to. So that means all of those previous women are engaged when this man proposes to wn. So he proposes to wn, He's the first one to propose to n women. And does she accept him or does she reject him? Well, every single other woman is engaged to someone and they all have to be engaged to different people. We don't know who they're engaged to. We don't even know that they're engaged to the same people they were engaged to when they rejected M1. But they're engaged and they're each engaged to a different man. So there are n minus one men that are engaged. This is the only man who's not engaged. If he proposes to WN and he's the only man who's not engaged, she has to say yes. She's clearly not engaged to anyone, which means we can never get to the second man. So this is never true. This can never happen. Because WN must accept. Okay, so that takes care of the first one. For the second one, for any instance in which two men, M1 and M2, both most prefer one woman, W, the ordering of M1 and M2's proposals determines whether M1 or M2 marries W. So we've got M1, and M1 prefers this woman, W, to everyone else. And we've got M2, and M2 prefers this woman, W, to everyone else. They can't both marry W. One or the other of them can marry her. Maybe neither of them will marry her. I mean, we don't know what the other preferences are, but one or the other of them at most can marry her. And this is asking whether the ordering of their proposals, whether M1 proposes before M2 or M2 proposes before M1, determines whether M1 or M2 marries W. And we already know from analysis of the Gale-Shapley algorithm that the result is not dependent on the order. In particular, we've already said the result is this unique optimal outcome for men among the stable matchings and the unique pessimal outcome for women among the stable matchings. So regardless of order, that is true, which means that the ordering of M1 and M2's proposals is totally irrelevant to how this turns out. So this statement is also never true. Every woman marries her most preferred man. Well, I said already, women get their pessimal outcome among all the stable matches. Does that mean that it's not the case that every woman marries her most preferred man? Well, not really. I mean, let's just have, uh, let's have W1 most prefer M1 and W2 most prefer M2 and W3 most prefer M3 and so on and so forth. 
and it doesn't matter what they list as the rest of their preferences because we want them to marry these men. Can we make it so that they'll marry these men? What can we do to the preferences on the men's side to ensure that W1 will marry M1? Well, let's make M1 want to marry W1. And in that case, they're going to get together, right? Nobody's going to break in on that arrangement because they'd both rather be married to each other than anyone else. And we can have M2 most prefer W2. And M3 most prefer W3. And so on and so forth. And if we do that, then M1's going to marry W1, M2's going to marry W2, M3's going to marry W3, and so on and so forth. So we can certainly find a configuration where this happens. I mean, heck, we only need one example to get to sometimes true. Well, hold on. I have to show that it cannot happen that every woman gets her most preferred man, but we've seen lots of examples where that doesn't happen. But I could just show one example. I could say there's one man and one woman, W1 and M1. They don't really have any choice. They've got to marry each other, right? <laughs> if you were the last woman on earth, etc., etc. So this is definitely true, at least some of the time. Is it always true? No, no, definitely not. Because, in fact, if if the men all have distinct preferences, so M1 prefers W1 and M2 prefers W2, and that's all the men there are, then they get their preferences because they get their optimal outcome among all stable matchings, and they're just not going to have to dive into anything more because they don't conflict with each other. There's not going to be an instability. So it actually doesn't matter what the women's preferences are, and we can construct preferences where they are unhappy. So we'll just have... W1 prefer M2, and W2 prefer M1. And the rest we could fill in, but we don't need to. So this is sometimes true. And although it's hard to see on my screen, there are more problems here. Oh no, look at those more problems suddenly appearing. Wow, this animation is amazing, isn't it? Okay, so we've got another problem. Some man marries his most preferred women. Uh, women. <laughs> Actually, we, we just saw that, right? We just saw M1 likes W1, W1 likes M1. They get married. This man marries his most preferred woman. So this can happen. Is it always true? Is it always true that some man marries his most preferred woman? Or can we construct a situation where it won't happen? That seems trickier than the last one. So let's see if we can do it. Let's see if we can do it with two men. So M1, we can just have his preference order be W1, W2. Uh, before we write out anything else, someone in some sense has to have that order because we can always rename the women so that that person has that ordering. And then M2, well, we already said if, if M2's preferences are distinct from M1, then M1 and M2 are just going to get their preferences and we won't go on because M1 will propose to a woman, she'll accept because she doesn't have a fiancé yet. M2 will propose to someone else, she'll accept too, and we'll be done. So we're going to have to have them have the same preferences if we want to avoid uh, them just ending up succeeding after one proposal each. Uh, now, somebody's not going to get their top, top choice. Some man's not going to marry his most preferred woman. But that's not what we're interested in. We're interested in whether some man marries his most preferred woman. And so far, this is yet another example. It doesn't even matter what the women say. Somebody's going to marry W1. Um, so that doesn't work with two. Uh, let's just try with three and see if that gives any insight. Um, so again, we can just say this is W1, W2, W3. It's not clear at this point that this has to be W1, W2. Maybe it's W1, W3. Let's just leave it as is for the moment. One thing we know for sure, though, is if, if we make M3 most prefer W1, we're going to lose again. Someone's going to marry W1. So we've got to have M3 most prefer somebody other than W1. Hmm. So M3's got to most prefer somebody other than W1, and M3 has to eventually marry W1. So let's have W1... Kind of not left enough room for my women, have I? Uh, let's have uh, W1, and I'll put her down here. W1 most prefer M3. Just to try to get her to marry M3. Hmm. This seems quite tricky, doesn't it? So let's see. Well, what if we think about proposals? M1 proposes to W1. Gets engaged to W1. 
W1 doesn't really like M1, but whatever. Then M2 proposes to W1, and maybe she breaks the propo the, the engagement with M1. Uh, let's try that. Uh, so to get her to break the engagement, we're going to have to put M2 here and M1 there. Okay. So M1 proposes to W1, and then M2 butts in and breaks the engagement. Now W1 is engaged to M2, and then M3 proposes to, let's say, W2. We can't say W1. Uh, now, oh, M1's the only one who's available, so M1's going to go in and propose to W2. We want, uh, we want M3 to get dumped. We want W2 to break it off with uh, M1, sorry, with M3, so that M3 will then propose to W1. So how do we get M3 to break it off? Sorry, how do we get W2 uh, to break it off with M3? Well, we need W2 to prefer M1 to M3. So if W2 prefers M1 to M3, then she will accept the engagement proposal from M1, and she'll be engaged to M1, and M3 will no longer be engaged to W2. So then we can have M3 propose to W1. M3 proposes to W1. She accepts. Uh, she likes him. And she will break it off with M2. And then M2 is going to go off and propose to W2. We actually don't care what happens at that point. I think we have succeeded. So let's fill this in the rest of the way. And W3, it appears we don't care about W3's preferences. So I'm just going to say M1, M2, M3. And now let's just check this again. We'll simulate the algorithm. Uh, the order of proposals shouldn't matter, so I'm just going to go in order. M1 proposes to W1, and they are engaged. M2 proposes to W1, and they are engaged because W1 prefers M2, so we break off this link. Then M3 proposes to W2, and they are engaged. And then M1 is available again, and has lost W1, so proposes to W2. And they are engaged because W2 prefers M1 to M3, so we lose this link right here. And M3 then proposes to W1, and they are engaged because W1 prefers M3 to... Who's she married to now? A little hard to see here. M2? Yep, prefers M3 to M2, so they break it off. And then M2 is going to propose. Uh, M2 was engaged to W1, now he'll try W2. And... W2 doesn't like him. Sorry, W2 prefers M1. Uh, so finally he'll go with M3, uh, sorry, W3. And she will accept him just because she's got another option. So we end up with M2 paired with W3, M1 paired with W2, and M3 paired with W1. And nobody has their top preference. So this is not always true, but it is sometimes true. That was a tricky one. Okay, for any instance in which two women, W1 and W2, both most prefer one man, M, one of W1 and W2 marries M. So two women both prefer a particular man, and we're going to say one of them will marry him. Uh, that's definitely not always true. We've already seen that the, the men in the men proposing version take preference if they have different preferences. So let's have the men have no arguments. They, they all have their top picks. And then we can have two women. Women 1 can both prefer uh, M2. Sorry, women 1 can most prefer M2. And women 2 can most prefer M2. Uh, oh, sorry, M3. M3. And women 3 can most prefer M1, and so on and so forth. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Uh, M1 is going to marry W1, M2 is going to marry W2, M3 is going to marry W3. We can see that if we simulate the algorithm. M1 proposes to W1, who accepts because she's got no other fiancé. M2 proposes to W2, who accepts. M3 proposes to W3, who accepts. And so we've got two women that both prefer man 3, 
but neither one of them marries man three. So this is not always true. And again, is it sometimes true? Sure, we can have all three women prefer M3, W3 will marry M3, or if we really want to stick with two women, both most preferring one man, we can just have M1 and M2, and who cares what their preferences are. W1 most prefers M1, W2 most prefers M1, well, one of them's going to marry M1, somebody's got to marry M1. So this is sometimes true, but not always true. So we had a bunch of statements that were not always true. And that completes that problem. Next, we'll move on to the next problem.